Hello again, this is Dr. Lindsay. And in this video, what I'd like to do is go over how the Department of Labor actually calculates this inflation rate. They interview thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people, try to figure out how they spend their money. And they create a basket of goods after thousands of interviews, and it's weighted by what people purchase. And in that basket, they have somewhere around 80,000 items. And these items are based upon what people buy, and they're weighted by categories that people of things people purchase. So they'll go out and they'll measure all these prices, all 80,000 of them, and see what the amount of this basket is. And the next month, they'll go out and they'll measure all these prices again and see how the price of this basket has changed. And that's the inflation rate. I've seen ads in the paper where they hire people to go out and look for uh, prices and check prices. And they'll have very specific things that they look for They'll check the price, they'll check these prices every single month and write it down and send it off to Washington where they put them all together and see how the basket has changed the price. Now, let me show you how this basket is weighted with another graph. This is the basket. Uh, it hasn't changed too much. I think this was about 10 years ago. And this shows how people spend their money or the typical family spends their money. About 41% of their budget is spent on housing. So 41% of the items in the basket have to do with housing. 17% is transportation. So transportation is things like cars, gas, car insurance, airplane tickets, bus tickets, 17% on the average is what of the budget is what typical family spends on transportation. 15% food and beverages, medical care, 7%, education, 7%, recreation, 6%, apparel, 4%. So this basket is weighted by what people buy. So they might buy diamonds and that might be in the basket, but it's only going to be a very small part of the basket because it's only a small percentage of, of the average family or typical family's budget. So we've got this basket here of 80,000 goods and they don't publish what these goods are that's in their basket or the price of each item in the basket. That's not particularly important. What's important that it represents what the typical family spends. So when this basket goes up in price, then we can see what the typical inflation rate is for the average family or typical family in the country. Now, it doesn't matter where these goods are produced. They could be produced in another country. Doesn't make any difference at all. We're just looking at what people buy here in the United States. and we put them in the basket. So, items that could be in the basket. Well, rent for an apartment. That could be in the basket. That's something that people buy and spend a large portion of their, their budget on. An apartment building could not be in the basket, the price of an apartment building because the typical family does not spend money or buy apartment buildings, they rent apartments. Now, when a, an apartment is put into the basket, it's a, a specific apartment in a specific city. So they'll pick a, say a particular apartment complex in Los Angeles, and they'll look at it, say what the cost is for renting a two bedroom, two bath apartment, and then the next month, 
someone will come and they'll check that exact same apartment again, that two bedroom, two bath apartment in the same complex and see how much it's renting for. Milk might be in the basket. Oat milk and 2% milk, whatever people are buying, it's going to be in the basket. So we'll have the rent for the apartment here, milk and so forth. But all these items are in the basket. 40 something percent is going to have to do with housing, utilities, or rent. Pizzas would be in the basket. And once again, if they're checking the price of pizza, they'll, predict, they'll pick out a particular pizza restaurant in some location for a specific type of pizza and then we'll keep going back every month to check that price of pizza. A pizza oven, not in the basket. Typical consumer does not buy a pizza oven. Airline ticket, in the transportation category. So they might check the price of an airline ticket from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, see how it changes. Of course, a Boeing 787 is not going to be in the basket. Gasoline would certainly be in the basket. Cars made in Japan, in the basket. If people are buying cars here in the US, it doesn't matter where they're made. So if it's made in Japan, they're buying cars made in Japan, that would be in the basket. It's whatever people are buying. We just wanna see how the prices change of what people are buying. Wine might be in there or wine from Chile would be in the, in the basket if that's what people are buying. Uh, goods for the military, not going to be in the basket. So they've got this basket of goods, 80,000 or so goods, weighted by what people buy. And they actually send someone out every month to check on them and see how the price changes from month, month to month. And you might think, well, isn't this kind of a labor intensive process, checking all these prices all over the country every month? And yes, it is. Spent a lot of time and effort coming up with this data. I suspect in your lifetime, that will change. There's probably better ways to calculate how prices are, changed, are changing. Uh, I know Google has been working on some ways to do it. And Amazon has been working on some ways to do it where they can do it electronically. Uh, there was something called the Million Prices Project uh, where they're measuring online prices of millions of goods. And the last I heard was that they were actually getting some pretty good numbers that were close to the CPI. It's gonna take some time though to switch over to another way of measuring prices. The CPI has been around for a long time, true and trusted, it's very important. And a change isn't going to be made um, unless we can find something that is shown to be just as good as the CPI for measuring prices. Uh, union contracts are frequently based upon uh, increases in inflation as defined by the inflation in the CPI. Uh, the cost of living for uh, retirement money, frequently based upon what the CPI is. If you are going to say, if you have a building, you're going to rent it to a grocery store for 10 years, they want to be able to rent your place for a long time. They're going to spend a lot of money making it look right. They don't want to move out after a year. So they might want, might want a 10-year contract or maybe longer. But how do you determine a price of what the lease should be 10 years out? We know we want to rent it today, but what about 10 years from now when there's a lot of inflation? 
So we might write the contract that, that the rent goes up by the amount that the CPI goes up every year. And that way we can keep the rent going up as inflation goes up and then nobody has to be kicked out or uh, move out of their property because of price changes. So you can imagine how important the CPI is because there's so many things based upon it, what inflation comes out as. So even a little bit of difference uh, has some pretty big impact for Social Security, for example, where the, the increases in the Social Security amounts depend upon the CPI. But I'm sure at some point here, there'll be a better way to do this. So how do we calculate the inflation rate? So let's say that in 2016, the basket, the price of the basket is 18,000. And in 2017 is 20,000, 2018, 22,000, 2019 is 25,000. Now in actuality, they calculate uh, the price of the basket every month. I'm just using an example where we're doing it every year here. Now you can see the price of the basket is going up and from 2016 to 2017, we went from 18,000 to 20,000. The inflation rate is just how much the prices went up in the basket. And the way we do it is just like GDP, we just take 20,000 minus 18,000 and divide it by 18,000. And so that comes out to 11%. 11.1%. So the basket went up 11.1% between 2016 and 2017. That's the inflation rate. And the next year we went from 20 to 22, 10% inflation. And the year after that, 22 to 25, I calculate a 13.6% inflation rate. So the inflation rate which is the rate of increase in prices which we symbolize with a pi is the growth rate The price is in the basket. Now, frequently growth rates are measured in exponential and logarithms, but nobody likes logarithms. So this is the actual way it's done um, when they're calculating the inflation in this country. Now, the next thing to do is to calculate an index. They arbitrarily pick a base year. And we'll say that base year is 2017. And they set the index equal to be 100. And the next year, if the basket goes up by 10%, the index will go up by the same amount. So the index in 2018 would be 110. So the index goes up at the same rate the basket goes up, which is the inflation rate. Now in 2016, since the basket is 90% of what is in 2017, the index would be 90. And I calculate 125 for 2019. If say in the year 2022, the price of the basket was 40,000. So the price is doubled between 2017 and 2022, the index would be 200. The basket doubles, 
the index would double too. So that means that inflation is not only the growth of prices in the basket, it's the growth rate of the index. So in calculating this index, we pick a base year. And set that equal to be 100. Set the base year, set the index in that base year. Now, why don't they just set it to be one? I don't know. It'd be a lot easier to understand and teach if they set it to set it to one, but they set it set it to 100. The best way to think about this is say, well, it's 100% in the base year. And that way in the year before, it's 90%, prices are 90% of the base year. And in 2018, prices would be 110% of the base year. So they don't publish what's in the basket. They don't publish the price of the basket. They don't need to. What they do is just publish the inflation rate and they will publish the index. Now in the United States, the index, the base year they have for the index is around 1983. That is the base year. And the index was set to 100 in that year. Now let me show you a graph of how this index has changed over time. This is a graph of the index, consumer price index, going back to about 1945. And you can see in 1945, it was about 25. And if we look at where 100 is, we'll go over that and you'll see that it'll come down at about 1983 or so. In fact, they say up here at the top, they say the index is 92 to 1984. It was like an average in there and they set that to be 100. This number here has been seasonally adjusted. And the current number, as I'm looking at it today, the index is 261.56. It continuously goes up as long as there's inflation. And you can see it dips down a couple of times during recessions usually. And that means that there was actually some deflation uh, when that graph dipped down a little bit. So right now it's 261.56. When you watch this video, it's going to be something different because it changes every month. I encourage you to click on the link I gave you to see what the current index number is. So, Right here, it's 261.56. What that means is in 1983, it was 100. Now it's 261. That means if something cost $100 in 1983, that it would be worth or cost $261 now here in December 2020. As long as it continued up in price, the same as the average in the basket, then it would be a little more than two and a half times the value or the price that it was in 
Okay, so what we did in this video is we went through how they create a basket of goods that they think the typical consumer buys. They've got about 80,000 items in the, that basket. They go out and they measure those prices every month to see how those prices have changed. That change in prices of the basket is equal to the inflation rate. And with that information, we can create an index that mimics the price of the basket. We set a base year arbitrarily, set that to be 100. And as that basket changes, it changes the index. If the basket increases by 10%, the index increases by 10%. The inflation rate is just the growth in prices in the basket, which is also the growth of the index number. In the US, the index, the base year that's set to be 100 is 1983. And it continues up as long as we have inflation. And as of the latest numbers that we have, as I'm making this video, December 2020, that index is 261.56, meaning that something that cost $100 in 1983 would cost $261 in December 2020. If it went up in price, the same as what the basket is going up in price. Some things, of course, will go up more than the basket or less than the basket, and that'll change the real prices, which we'll go over in another video.